Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us for our webinar today, QuickBooks Premiere for New Desktop Users. Before we get started, I just want to go over a few housekeeping items, so all callers will be muted. If you have questions, feel free to use the Q&A tab that you should see at the bottom of your screen. If you lose your internet connection, you can reconnect using the link that was emailed to you. If you have to drop off early or if you want to watch the webinar again, we'll be hosting the webinar on our website at techsoup.org slash community slash events dash webinars. We'll also be sending an email with the presentation, the recording, and any relevant links. If you're on social media, feel free to tweet at us at TechSoup using hashtag TSWebinars. But like I said earlier, we will be um, using the Q&A box that you see uh, at the bottom of your screen. So just a little bit about TechSoup. We are located in 236 countries and territories. We serve over 1.1 million nonprofits around the world offering donated or discounted uh, technologies. You can see some of our technology partners here. Um, if you're interested in finding out if your organization is eligible, uh, please go to TechSoup.org slash get product donations. And just a little bit, so today we are focused on QuickBooks and we do have an Intuit donation program. So if you're interested in learning more, you can see some of the offerings that we have here for nonprofits. And to get more information, please visit TechSoup.org slash Intuit. All right, so uh, before I make introductions, I just want to make sure you guys can hear me okay. Um, so there, you should be able to see an audience chat, and I would love to hear where you guys are calling in from, and I'll read a few of them out before I go ahead and make introductions. All right, so we have Chicago. Is that it? New York, okay. San Francisco, Dallas, Santa Ana, Portland, Denver, Davenport, Florida, Buffalo, New York. Okay, awesome. So it sounds like you guys can hear me okay. Um, all right, so I'm going to go ahead and make introductions. So my name is Seema Tucker, and I am the Senior Manager of Content at TechSoup. Um, I have my colleague with me, uh, Stephen Davidson, who's the Marketing Associate at TechSoup. And we also actually also have a couple of other people um, from QuickBooks Made Easy. We have Bill and Jennifer who will be helping on the back end. And we have our main presenter today, Greg Bossen. So Greg Bossen is a practicing CPA and advanced certified QuickBooks Pro Advisor with a full service accounting firm located in Atlanta, Georgia. He is also the founder and CEO of QuickBooks Made Easy. Since 2000, Greg has been helping teach live QuickBooks seminars around the country, specifically designed for nonprofits, and he is considered to be a national expert in the program. So I'm going to go ahead and pass it off to Greg. All right. Thank you so much, Seema. And the first thing I'm going to do is share my screen. Uh, hopefully you will see here in one second my screen. I'm using the same slides. Uh, let's see here. I'm almost ready. Now, while we're doing this, Seema, I don't know if you knew, but there's a couple of people that were getting echoes, uh, which to me would indicate that you have your speaker turned up on your computer, even though you are listening on a telephone, uh, <clears throat> that there would be an uh, echo. But you should be looking at my screen now. So, Seema, do we, am I ready to start? Did you want to say anything about the echo situation or... Um, yeah, I'm not sure if you guys are still getting an echo, but you sound loud and clear, so I think we're we're good to go, and I can see your screen. Okay, all right. Well, so uh, yeah, Bruce says it sounds good over the over the phone. Vicky was the one getting the echo. Hey, Vicky, how are you? She's from Austin. Austin is a cool town. All right, so um, I am a CPA. And uh, I specialize in nonprofit organizations. Um, and actually, before we even do that, the very next slide is what we're going to be learning today. Uh, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to talk real quickly about the different QuickBooks products that are available um, and what's best for you. Um, we're going to teach you how to kind of maneuver around in the software so you can get comfortable with it. And then we're going to give you the basics of properly setting up an organization in QuickBooks, which is actually pretty different for a nonprofit than it is for a regular uh, for-profit business. And so I just want to say right off the bat to make sure that you're in the right webinar, guys, this is for new users. 
So if you already understand QuickBooks, you in the wrong webinar, okay? This is for new users just getting started, all right? Now, even though you might be new to uh, nonprofits, you may not, maybe you're not new to QuickBooks, but you may be new to nonprofits, and you'll still get a lot out of this webinar, I promise you. Um, the other thing that I want to say to you is uh, when we get to the different versions of QuickBooks, um, what we're teaching today is we're teaching this version. This is the desktop version of QuickBooks. This is the version that we're teaching. If that is not your version, if instead your version looks like this, once again, you in the wrong webinar. Okay, so uh, go ahead and just, you know, you can actually put it in the chat because it looks like I can still see chats. I don't know if I can or not, but um, if you're in the wrong webinar for any reason, let us know. Um, but we're doing this webinar again, TechSoup, just for the online edition, uh, I think the week after next or next week or something like that. So, But this particular webinar is for the desktop. Is everybody okay with that? Uh, it doesn't look like I can see chats while I'm presenting, so that's unfortunate. But anyway, all right, so uh, let me get back to the little slide deck here. And just so you know a little bit more about me, I'm a CPA with an accounting practice here in Atlanta, Georgia. I specialize in nonprofits. Uh, we do audits in nonprofits. We do consulting for nonprofits. We do 990s. I mean, it's, it's our whole practice, you know, or a ton of it anyway. We also own QuickBooks Made Easy for Nonprofits. Our goal is to teach nonprofits how to use QuickBooks. We do this through on-demand streamable training through our website that you can purchase. We also have uh, phone tech support that you can sign up for. We also have live seminars and webinars across the country. Uh, this particular one doesn't cost anything. It's free. We do it with TechSoup a couple times a year. So anyway, that's the deal with that. Oh, Brian, I can see the text. So Brian has online, so she's, he's leaving or she's leaving. Uh, catch you later. Uh, so if you want to find out about some of our other events, this is some of the other stuff that's coming up, uh, different live seminars we have, which is a full-day seminar. And then we have a three-day webinar series that happens two times a year, once uh, in May. This year it's happening on May the 12th, 13th, and the 14th, and it teaches you everything you need to know about QuickBooks if you're a nonprofit. Uh, and then the other one is in November, the 10th, 11th, and the 12th for the desktop anyway. So to sign up for it, you can go to QuickBooksMadeEasy.com. But let's see uh, how I teach first. We're also going to give you a discount on our trainings that are streamable as well as our tech support, um, but we will talk about that later. Uh, so the first thing I want to do, and this is a new platform for us, and so I need to uh, – but I want to do this poll. So let's see if this poll works. I'm going to launch this little little poll here. And, and there we go. All right, so now you should be seeing a poll. How new are you to QuickBooks? And I want everybody to answer this. This gives me an idea of who we're talking to here. So everybody, if you could answer for me, that would be great. Uh, the first one is never seen it. I'm scared and somewhat nauseated. Uh, now, I'm, oh, it says it's not sent. Are people answering it? I'm not seeing. Are those the answers, guys? I didn't see any answers. No, we only had five people answer. So I don't think that that one worked. Oh, is it still building? Okay, good. I think so. I want yeah, every, I think they're still, okay. I think they're still okay. answering. So okay, cool. So we have like about 160 people on the call. So I really do want to get a good idea of where y'all are. So I know polls are boring, but never seen it, scared, somewhat nauseating, saw it, closed it down, still nauseated. Kind of know QuickBooks, but not well. Um, uh, know QuickBooks, but not for nonprofits. Know it pretty well for nonprofits, but have some questions. And then I'm a QuickBooks master. So we'll give you just another 30 seconds or so to answer that. We got 170 people on the call. We got about 100 people that have answered. Uh, and I think I'm going to go ahead and call it done so we can get an idea. It looks like that the vast majority of you 
uh, are right in the middle. You know QuickBooks, but not that well. Um, now, there is a chunk of people, of the people that answered, over a third of you have never seen the program before, saw it, and closed it down. So this is really for basics. So we had 20 users that say they know QuickBooks pretty well for nonprofits, but have some questions. That's you guys. You're, I will hopefully try and answer your questions, but understand this is a little bit of a basic situation. But don't leave because it's a very interesting, uh, it's a very interesting webinar anyway. Uh, Nicole says, is everyone able to see the poll results? Uh, are you all seeing the poll results? Put it in the chat. So I'll make sure you can see the poll results. Send results to audience. Yeah, there we go. Okay, cool. You can. Great. All right. So uh, let me go back and share my screen again. That was interesting. And this is a new, again, it's a new platform for us. And so I am still learning it. Let's see. <clears throat> All right. So you should be, well, in a second here. There we go. And Okay, great. So now you should be seeing that uh, the little PowerPoint slide that I have with the poll on it. So let's move on here. So this is what we're going to cover today. You should be seeing the agenda slide now. This is what we're going to cover. We're going to talk about what QuickBooks is for and what it's not for. Um, we're going to talk about what QuickBooks products are available. Uh, the different choices and which product is best for you. Then we're going to go into QuickBooks and we're going to do, and this is where we're going to spend most of our time, we're going to do a live demo of getting around in the software, how to set up your chart of accounts, where and how to track your programs, how to enter balance, your opening balances if you really are just getting started, how to enter budgets, uh, and then getting budget to actual reports easily, and then we'll do some questions. So we only have, you know, the whole thing is about 90 minutes, and so I think we'll get to everything. Understand, I'm not going to be able to get into the gory details that I would you'd normally do in our regular trainings, but I think we're going to get a lot. I think you'll get a lot out of this. So first of all, what is well, QuickBooks? Oh, sorry, we, we actually only have 60 minutes today, so I think everyone's expecting a one-hour webinar. Really? Okay. I did not know that. I looked on the ad. It said 90 minutes this morning. I, I but Okay. Let me confirm. But yeah. Yeah. Are you guys expecting 60 or 90 minutes? Go ahead and put me up something in the chat uh, and see whether y'all expecting 60 or 90 minutes. Uh, I can do either. I'm flexible. <laughs> uh, no one's answering in the chat, so... Well, anyway, a 60. Okay, Pat said 60. All right, well, then let's get rolling then. So what I want you to know is QuickBooks is a financial accounting software package, which means it does accounting. Oh, Annie says 90. Yolanda says 60. All right. Uh, it's an accounting package. It tracks invoices and receivables. It tracks expenses and AP. You can print your checks on it. It does payroll and process credit cards too. That's an add-on that costs extra money. Um, if, you did get the, if you get the QuickBooks from TechSoup, you won't get the payroll or the credit card processing. You've got to pay for that extra. All right? And then uh, – it also is a light donor database. It's actually not bad as a donor database, but not awesome. Um, but just kind of wanted to throw that out there for you. Uh, and I have training on how to use QuickBooks as a donor database. So, but first thing we're going to do is just talk real quick about the choices of QuickBooks. And I know you probably have already purchased yours, or maybe you haven't. Um, but these are the different choices of QuickBooks. And the first thing I want to say to you is that there's two main kind of groupings of QuickBooks products. There's the people that use the desktop, and there's people that use the online edition. And if you decide to buy the desktop, that's this. And it's on your computer. It's a program. You download it onto your C drive um, from the Intuit website or from the TechSoup website after they send you a link, and you have the program much like Microsoft Word on your computer. The online edition is a completely different program. The online edition looks like this. And um, this is for people that want to be able to access their data file anywhere, anytime. And so you'll find people starting to use the online edition. It, the reporting isn't as great as the desktop, um, and so some larger nonprofits prefer to use the desktop. Also, since it looks completely different, there's a lot of QuickBooks users out there that just don't want to try and learn a new software 
software. So they're just like, you know, dude, I'm just going to stick with this one. So anyway, both of these products are fine, um, and this is the one that we're teaching today. So, But back to our little slide here. Once you decide that you're getting the desktop, there are actually one, two, three, four choices of QuickBooks that you can get for the desktop. QuickBooks Pro, that's like the basic QuickBooks program. It's not nonprofit specific, but it works fine for nonprofits. QuickBooks Premier Nonprofit, that is the one that is on the Quick um, on the TechSoup website um, and you use it for the for computers that are PC based. Enterprise, QuickBooks Enterprise is a very expensive program. It costs $1,100, $1,200 for one uh, license, and that is for really large companies. It's not something that almost that most nonprofits need. It's also not on the TechSoup website. Uh, and then there's QuickBooks for the Mac, which is on the QuickBooks uh, on the TechSoup website. If you have a Macintosh and you want to use QuickBooks Desktop, you have to get QuickBooks for the Mac. Um, not as good as the PC version, uh, I'll be honest with you. So when I do have clients that have the Macintosh, I tell them to get a parallel so they can use a Windows version of QuickBooks on their Mac. All right. So those are the four choices of desktop. There's also a bunch of choices online. Uh, that's the other version, but we're not talking about that now. The main thing I want to say to you is this is the version that you're going to want to use, the QuickBooks Premier Nonprofit Edition. And it is very inexpensive at TechSoup. Um, I can't remember what the prices are now, uh, but uh, I don't know, Seema, if you want to tell them what the prices are, but um, maybe it's in one of those slides. But they're very inexpensive. Uh, what is it like seventy five dollars for one user and or maybe it's sixty dollars for one user and a hundred and seventy yeah, we'll, for three we'll send it out in the all right okay we'll send it out it's really an expensive yeah. which reminds me somebody did ask um can you have three users in at the same time? I saw that as a question a while ago, and uh yes, you can you have to have a separate license, which is why when you're when you're in the TechSuit website you'll purchase the three user license and then you can have them in at the same time uh, and then you can control what each can and can't get into. Somebody wanted to know if you could restrict access and you can. All right. So, uh, all right. So that's basically uh, the deal with that. And now we're going to move into a live demo of QuickBooks. So I'm going to go into QuickBooks itself. And uh, first thing I want to do is I want to kind of teach you how to get around in the software. Oh, and by the way, Seema, did we decide whether we have 60 or 90 minutes? Um, so we, ha we unfortunately only have 60 minutes because I think that is what uh, the audience is expecting. But I, I think if you go okay. a few minutes over, it will be okay. Okay. All right. Okay, great. Yeah. So, so I am assuming, and this is for people that have never used it before, once you load the program, there is sample files that it will allow you to open. So before you ever create your file in QuickBooks, I would encourage you to look at the sample file and learn, play around with that one. So I'm in my own sample file here. Okay? And this is basically what your screen looks like. And I'm very cognizant of how people need to feel comfortable with the screens in QuickBooks. And so there's all these buttons and stuff here, so I want to make this real easy for you. So I'm going to talk about this. This top bar right here, and let me see if I can still, can I zoom in? Yeah, I can zoom in. This top bar, and it says Sample Synergy Now, Dash, QuickBooks, Premier Nonprofit, that's called the title bar, and it's telling you what version of QuickBooks you have and what company file you have. And that's something you do need to understand also. With QuickBooks, you have two things in your computer. You have the program itself, QuickBooks Premier Nonprofit 2020, and you also have your data file. That's the thing that has all the transactions in it. And when you're working in QuickBooks, you're working on your data file at, through the QuickBooks program. And it's the same thing with Microsoft Word. Microsoft Word is a program, and then your document is the equivalent of the QuickBooks data file, which means that you can have more than one document in Word, and yes, you can have more than one QuickBooks company file. 
Uh, if anybody wants to put in the chat here and let me know if you have more than one company file, um, I do. I can click File, Previous Company, and look at all these previous – look at all these companies that I have on my computer, just like ex different Word documents. Okay? But anyway, so that's the title bar. There, if you think about it, there are three other things you're looking at on this screen. Okay? The first thing you're looking at is this page right here, this home page, which is like a flow chart. Gives you not everything that QuickBooks does, but gives you the major things that QuickBooks does. Okay? So if you want to enter a check, I can click enter checks and it pops up a picture of a check. And this looks like a check, and there's a check number here, check number 1001. So that's one way of getting where you need to go, is using this home page, which is uh, this flow chart here. The second way of getting around is this bar along the left-hand side. Now this bar along the left-hand side is called the toolbar. Some people call it the icon bar. And this bar gives you, again, just like the home page, it gives you major things that you want to do. Not everything, but the major stuff. Same thing with the shortcuts. And if I scroll down here to where it says check, you'll see here's a picture of a check again. So that's the second way of getting around, all right? Uh, and this is the same check number 1001. So this thing here on the left-hand side, it takes up a lot of space on your computer. So there's two ways to alleviate that. One thing, you can take this little arrow right here, collapse it, and it makes it real small so you don't have to look at it until you need it. The other thing that you can do is if you click this View button right here, we can move it so that it's at the top rather than the left-hand side. So I'm going to move it up to the top. And now here it is, and here's the little shortcuts. There's the check. And by the way, if you've been using QuickBooks a long time, I guess no one here has, but it used to be up on the top, and then about seven, seven years ago, they moved it to the side, and people freaked out and because, you know, nobody likes change. And so they made it to where you could move it up on the top again. So I like using it on the top. But that's the second way of getting around. The third way of getting around is this little thin bar here. It's called the menu bar. The menu bar is different than the other two things, the icon bar and the, and the home page, because the menu bar is going to give you every single thing that QuickBooks does. So, and they have this in other software packages, but there's all kinds of things on here. So, but if I want to write a check, it's under the banking area. I click Write Checks, and there's the same check, Check 1001. So just kind of highlighting these are different ways of getting to the same place in the program. All right? So I think that's everything about getting around in the program. So I'm going to stop for a second before we get into what your chart of accounts should look like and stuff like that and just see if anybody has any questions. So uh, Jenny or Bill, does anybody have a question for me? Yes. Hey, Greg. I do have a question that I'm not real sure. Um, Someone wanted to know if you use Parallels on Mac to use QB Premier Desktop, do you also need Microsoft Windows 10 operating software? You need the operating software on your Mac version, and I believe when I say Parallels, I think that's what I'm talking about. I believe there's a piece of software that you buy that will allow Windows to run on a Mac. I don't think you have to get two pieces of software, but I don't use Macs, so I'm not, I may be skidding my ignorance on this. If anybody in the, in the session here knows, you can type it in the audience chat, and then I'll read it. Um, is there anybody else that has a question? Hey, Greg? Yes. Uh, there's one question here. If you're switching from the Premier Edition, oh, I'm sorry, someone must have just answered it while I was... <laughs> Okay. All right. Well, let's, you are so good, Bill. I mean, you just you just things get answered just automatically when you read the questions. That's wonderful. All right. Uh, let's see. Uh, okay. Yeah. So um, Amy Chen is telling me that uh, an email that I sent said it was a 90-minute webinar. So I apologize, Annie. Annie, not Amy. 
I thought that it was 90 minutes, but apparently it's only 60. But um, all right, the uh, but we'll get through this. We'll get through this. We'll just get through it in a little bit of a faster pace. So what we're going to talk about next is uh, setting things up. So when you very first go to set up your company in QuickBooks, uh, and understand, uh, many of you maybe already have your company set up in QuickBooks, but if you don't, there's a little button over here on the right. It's called Create a New Company File. It's kind of like creating a new Word document. It's right there on the right there, and if you click that, it will allow you to create a new company, all right? And uh, where's my mouse? Here's my mouse. So when you go to create the new company, it's going to ask you just a very few questions. What's the name of your company? What's the address of the company? And it is going to ask you what your industry is. I want you to pick nonprofit, all right, because that's what you are. Now, if you're a nonprofit, Dance studio, don't look for dance studio, just pick nonprofit. So I want all of you to pick nonprofit. And the reason why I'm telling you that is because when you pick nonprofit, it's going to give you a set of accounts. Okay? And those accounts are not going to be the right ones. Okay? They're not going to be what you really need, but they're at least going to get you started. So everybody's going to start with at least some accounts. Now, I do want to take a minute just to kind of give you a quick little lesson in accounting so that you understand what accounts are. And then after we do that, then we'll talk about setting them up and what yours should be. So first of all, and I'm going to ask you a question. And uh, thank you, Annie. I appreciate you understanding. And I want you to answer in the audience chat because I can see the audience chat. The whole purpose of accounting is to create two reports. What are those two reports? Somebody chat me up and answer. What are the two reports that all accounting is really about? Uh, somebody give me an answer. What do you all think? What are the two reports? I know there's a ton of reports that you need, but what's the most basic one? So I can't see the chat. I'm assuming people are answering. I don't know. Bill, does anyone have an answer for me? Um, let's see. No, no one's answered. I wonder if nobody can hear me. I think Maybe they've they all gone you. to sleep. It's, it's, it's going into the uh, Q&A box and not the chat. Oh, there we go. Okay. So, Joe, that's a, that's a, nine, that's a 990. The, uh, that's a tax return form, and Yolanda said year-end. Yeah, you need year-end financials. What are those two financial statements that you need, though? What are the two main financial statements? Well, in the interest of time, I'm just going to go ahead and tell you. So the first one is called the profit and loss. Some people call it the income statement. Um, nonprofits actually call it the statement of activity. And you usually give this to your board compared to a budget. And then the other report is actually going to be the balance sheet. Okay. So really, all accounting is basically entering transactions so they end up on these two reports. The balance sheet gives you a snapshot picture of what your business looks like at a point in time. Thank you, Stacy. Uh, and then the P&L, which can also be called the, the income statement of Stacy, it tells you basically the what happened during a particular time period. So the balance sheet is as of a point in time, and it says what you have, your assets, what you owe, and whatever the difference is, which is equity. And the P&L is more like a movie of transactions over a period of time. It says all the money that came in and all the money that went out. Okay? So by looking at these two statements, you can analyze your business. This tells you what happened over a period of time, the P&L, and as a result, this is what you look like at a point in time. All of these lines on the P&L and on the balance sheet, they are your accounts in your chart of accounts list. And all accounting is doing is entering transactions so that they end up on these reports, but they go through the chart of accounts list first. And I'm going to go to lists chart of accounts list. Now, the very first time you set up your, uh, you, you, you create a new company, QuickBooks is going to give you some ready-to-go accounts, like I said before, but they won't be right. They'll, they, you'll want to get rid of some of them, add others, 
And so that's what um, uh, we're going to talk about now. First, we're going to talk about how to create these accounts. And you can see that these are the accounts that are appearing on the financials, checking, savings, memberships, checking, savings, memberships, and then the P&L, what do we got here? Individual contributions, corporate foundation grants, individual contributions, corporate foundation grants. Okay? So this chart is the very first thing you want to set up and make sure is correct before you start using QuickBooks. And if you have a file that's messed up, you maybe want to clean this thing up. You may want to after you listen to the rest of the webinar because you may realize you're doing something wrong. Okay? So first thing we're going to do is I'm going to talk about basically the nuts and bolts of how to create an account, how to add one, how to edit one, how to get rid of one. After I do that, then I'm going to talk about what your chart of accounts needs to look like. Okay? So to add an account, and I like to do things from the beginning here. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to lists, and I'm going to go to chart of accounts right there. And here's my chart of accounts list. To add, edit, delete, whatever you want to do, you go to this bottom button on the bottom left, you click it, and you click New if you want to add. If you want to edit or delete, you click on the account that you want to get rid of, and you go to the bottom and you click Delete. Okay? So let's add one. I'm going to click New. Let me do it again. I'm going to click New. And understand, I'll tell you what your account should be in a minute. Right now, I just wanted to show you how to add an account. So the first thing you need to understand is that when you create an account, you have to pick the type that it is. And the type is really important because the type you pick de uh, determines whether the account appears on the P&L or on the balance sheet. And by the way, these aren't all the choices. These are all the choices down here, this list and with this list. This list just isn't used as much. Okay? So for instance, if I pick an income type account, that is for accounts that are income accounts that appear on the P&L. If I pick bank, that's an account that's an asset. It appears on the balance sheet. So the type you pick determines where it appears on the financial. And these account types, you can't create your own. They're standard for all accountants. And whoever it is that does your 990 or your audit, believe me, they know what these types are. So um, it even tries to give you some suggestions here. Um, so I'm going to create a comp uh, an account for computer equipment. And, and just for purposes of time here, that is a fixed asset type of account. I'm going to click Continue. If you don't know that, talk to your accountant. I'm going to name it Computer Equipment. And oh, I hate when that happens. Uh, computer Equipment. All right, so that's basically the name of the account. This is the type, and that's all you need to do. The rest of these fields you can leave blank. People get hyped up. They're like, oh, my gosh, I have to put something in every single field, otherwise I'm going to die. No, you don't. Um, all you got to do is name the type, put the name in here. Um, you could enter an opening balance here, but I'm going to suggest a different way of doing it that's better, so leave that button alone if you're just getting started, and you click Save and Close, and that's how you add an account. It's not that big of a deal. Once you have these accounts, then you can start using them in transactions. And just so that you can kind of see, I'm going to write a check here. It came out of the checking account, and it was for computer equipment. See how I can put it down here? So that's the deal. You use these accounts when you're entering the transactions. Okay? So that's how you add an account. Now, there are going to be accounts that either you don't ever use, um, but they were used in the past, or maybe they've never been used at all. So when you, what I really want you to do is set this chart of accounts up so that you really understand what every account means. So if there's an account that QuickBooks gave you or that's sitting there in your file and you don't like it, like this 4013B, we never did sign up for this, so we don't actually have a 403, uh, then I might as well delete it. So to delete it, you highlight it, you click on it, you click delete. Okay? Oh, by the way, I should say, if you want to change the name of an account, you click edit. It pops you back up here, then you can change the name of the account. But um, anyway, to delete, I click delete, 
are you sure you want to delete? I click OK. And it goes away. But many times you have a data file that has, you've inherited, and there's accounts that you don't really understand what they are, and you want to get rid of them. Well, look what happens if I try and get rid of, let's get rid of other supplies. We don't know what that means. We have office supplies. We're going to get rid of other supplies. Bottom left-hand button, delete. It's saying that it cannot delete the account because it either has a balance or it's been used in a transaction. So what that means is, you see, maybe even once, 20 years ago, somebody pointed a check to it. Well, if I were delete the, to delete the account off of your data file, then the transaction wouldn't know where to go, and so your computer would blow up. Uh, so if it's ever been used, you can't delete it. However, you can, the little blue button there, make it inactive. And what making it active does is it hides it. So I want you to look very carefully. You see how we have office supplies, then other supplies in green, and then underneath it professional. So just look at that. When I click make it active, you see how it's gone? It's not really gone. It's still on transactions. It's still on reports. So here's other supplies that was used, so it's still there. But you will be able, you won't be able to use it in the future. In other words, you won't see it on a drop down list when you're trying to use it. So this is an excellent way of cleaning up your books and activating accounts so you don't see them in the list anymore and they're not even there. But they're actually still there, they're just hidden from view. You see this include and active down here? I'm going to go ahead and click it, and now it comes back again, and it has a little X mark next to it. And the reason why I like to show this is because once you've been activated once, and you put the little X mark here, you see the little X mark here, um, and you click Include an Active, look how easy it is to just start inactivating a bunch of accounts rather than doing them individually. So anyway, so that's an easy way of clearing up accounts. So that's basically adding, uh, and it's also um, deleting, uh, inactivating, and editing. Okay. So I think I want to spend some time talking about what your accounts should be, uh, and then we'll move on to uh, your programs, which is important. Now, in terms of what your accounts should be, and I know a lot of you may not know a lot about nonprofit accounting, or at least nonprofit accounting in QuickBooks. So um, I'm going to break the discussion up into three areas. First, I'm going to talk about balance sheet accounts and what those need to be. Then I'm going to talk about on the p and I'm going to talk about what your income account should be and what your expense account should be. Now, the balance sheet accounts, this is fairly simple. This is not hard to do. With balance sheet accounts, Basically, you'll need to get a copy of either a financial statement from the old software package or a tax return, something that has the balance sheet on it. And that will tell you what the balance sheet accounts should be. Now, just so that, you know, I'm not just saying that, I want to go ahead and give you some more details. You'll need to have an account for each one of your bank accounts. I have one here for checking, I have one here for savings. If you have any receivables, in other words, if you invoice customers for tuitions or for dues or for sponsorships or for program service or for trainings, whatever, then you want to have a receivable account if you invoice for it and they pay you later. Um, another big one you'll want to have is furniture and equipment. Now, if you're a very small nonprofit, you can probably get away with just one account that says furniture and equipment. I've kind of broken it up here into one for furniture, one for equipment. Uh, those are the main ones. You'll need one for each bank account. You may need a receivable. You'll probably have some equipment. This is a deposit that we have for rent. Um, this is the deposit when we signed our lease. So that's an asset that we'll get back when we leave, provided we don't trash the place. Uh, now, you'll need an account for your payables. QuickBooks creates that for you, so you don't have to worry about creating that. If you use credit cards, you'll want to set up each credit card with its own credit card account. 
uh, so that you can enter the charges separately for each card and then record the payments. This becomes like its own little accounts payable outside of the rest of payables. A lot of people make the mistake of just charging things in June, then the bill comes in July, they pay it in August, and they don't enter anything in QuickBooks until they pay it in August. Well, then your expenses are two months old. You really want to record the charges when they occur, and if you set up a credit card account, it allows you to do that. So um, then if you're using QuickBooks to do your payroll, you're using one of the QuickBooks payroll services QuickBooks offers, then you're going to want to have a separate liability account for each liability. It makes finding and fixing problems a lot easier later. Most people are with an outside payroll company these days, either ADP or Paychex or SurePay or Paycom. If that's you, you'll just need to have one account called payroll liabilities. You'll just have to have one account for that. If you have any loans, maybe the AED loans some money or the board member loans some money. Here we got a loan from a bank, uh, maybe to buy a piece of equipment or a building. We need an account for that. And then the equity accounts, you can just leave them where they are. You don't need to create any extras. Uh, they'll already be there when you create a new account. So here's your balance sheet accounts. So uh, let's uh, – Let's move on to the P&L because this is where, thing, where people screw up a little bit. So I'm going to spend a few minutes on this, and then we'll stop and take some questions. So income. So I, let me just say it this way, first of all. When it comes to your income and your expense accounts, really any of the accounts that are on the P&L, a huge problem that we see, we being accountants, is that people don't know very much about QuickBooks, and they create an account for every single possible thing known to man. And then when whoever did that leaves the nonprofit, another person comes, they don't get trained, so then they add a bunch more accounts. They use the accounts for everything in life. And you end up with 50 million accounts. Well, if you have a lot of accounts, it makes it complicated when you're entering transactions because you don't know where to point them. There's so many choices. But the big news is when you go to create a report for the board, the P&L is so long that um, uh, the P&L is so long that it's more than one page to read it. And I want you to be able to give the board of directors a report compared to budget for the profit and loss that they'll actually read. In that case, we need to have a one-page P&L, which means we don't need to have very many accounts. So as I tell you what your accounts need to be, understand the main theme is the following. We're going to save the income and expense accounts for the major things that we need to track, and all of the other stuff that we need to track, we're going to use other parts of QuickBooks to track. Okay? And this is the advantage of coming into a QuickBooks class before you get started because then you can see all the different ways that you can track things. Now, the best way to show you the right way to set up income and expense accounts is to show you the wrong way. So I've got another file that I'm going to open here, uh, and it's going to show us a P&L that is the wrong way, okay? This is the wrong way to do this, okay? So we'll start over here with income. Restricted grants, 65000 Now, grants that are restricted, they need to be tracked. And the main thing you need to track with restricted grants is how the money was spent. Having an income account called restricted grants does not tell you how the money was spent. So it is quite unhelpful, and it clutters up the P&L. Don't have an income account called restricted grants. If you get a grant that's restricted from a foundation, then you end up going, well, I don't know whether to put in the, in the restricted grants line or in the foundation grants line. I need it in both lines. See, it doesn't make sense. Don't have restricted grants. We're going to use another list in QuickBooks to track your restricted grants. Same thing with, look at this next one, the Green Truth Grant, the United Fund Grant. That's the person who's decided they want to have a separate income account for each grantor. Again, we're going to use the customer list for that. We do not need to have that in QuickBooks. So when it comes to your income accounts, we should only have these. That Now, 
there's obviously exceptions, but in general, the very first four accounts pretty much everybody should have. Individual contributions, corporate grants, foundation grants, government grants. That's it. The reason why is because that's how I have to report it on an audit. That's how I have to report it on a 990, and that is a really good way for a board of directors to figure out where your money is coming from. Okay? So that's the deal with that. Now, I know you have different types of giving, and you might want to track them differently. There's another list for that in QuickBooks. It's called the items list where you can track this event versus that event or this direct mail campaign versus that direct mail campaign. But you want to just have these major four. Okay. Now, the rest of the income accounts, program fees, membership dues, miscellaneous income, this is your earned income because many of you don't just get donations. You take tickets, you have tuitions, you have registration fees for maybe uh, workshops or an annual conference or whatever. You'll have income accounts for that. I do want you to set up each one as an income account. Notice how I have one for membership dues. I will take membership dues as an example. If you have membership dues, frequently you have different levels. You have the affiliate member and the, and the general member and the retired member, and you might want to track those separately. Don't do that with your income accounts. There's another list. It's called the items list. That's where you track the individual, more granular detail of your income accounts. You just want to have major income accounts on the chart of accounts. I only end up here with like nine or what is it? Eight, eight different income accounts. Okay. All right. Now, when it comes to expenses, expenses people screw up more than they do income. Okay. So uh, let me show you what some people do here. Well, actually, I think I'm going to do it this way. And this is kind of a huge point. So I'm going to I'm going to spend a minute on this. When it comes to expenses, there are really two main. Uh, let me see if I can open up a Word document here. There are two main uh, things that you need to track when it comes to your expenses in QuickBooks. Uh, and let me just make the font a little bit bigger here, and we'll center this. Okay, so when it comes to expenses, there are two main ways are main things that you need to track about them in QuickBooks. And one of them is what I call, let me make this a little smaller, the natural category of the expense. Okay? This is what it was. What is it? This is the natural way of thinking about expenses, something like, supplies, or travel, or salaries, or rent, the basics, okay? The normal way of thinking about expenses. And yes, nonprofits need to track that. That's what all businesses track. But there's an additional layer, uh, an additional piece of information that you need to track about your expenses, and it is the function of the expense. Okay? This is going to be the why of the expense. Why was it spent? And basically, there are three groups, three uh, categories that expenses go in. One of them is programs, and funders want to know that you spend at least 75% of your money on programs. The other is admin. Some people call this uh, general and administrative. Uh, some people call it overhead. This is just the cost of doing any business. It's the cost of accounting. It's the cost of the uh, of 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 the uh, license to keep your corporate license. Uh, it's administrative stuff. It's not helping the children. Then the third category is fundraising, and this is the cost of doing a direct mail campaign, the salary of the development director, that goes into fundraising. Okay? And you need to track those things in QuickBooks. Okay? And as a matter of fact, if it's a program, funders and your board probably or certainly staff wants to know which program. 
So you might have more than one program. There's program one, you have program two, like that. Now, what people do that's wrong is they use the chart of accounts to track the programs when they should be using a different list called a class list. And that's what's happening here. So what we have here is this nonprofit has a guidance center, an aware campaign, and a conference. And people are pointing expenses to it. Well, if you do that, then if I'm a reader of the financial statements, I really don't know what your salaries are. I don't know what your travel is. I don't know what your rent is because everything is being lumped here into these categories. So what some people do is they create sub-accounts underneath them, but then you have a chart of accounts that's really huge. And you end up with a parent account called Program 1, or in this case, a wear campaign, and you have expenses under that. And then you have program two, and then you have the same expense accounts underneath that. So if you have 50 expense accounts, you have five programs, you end up with 250 expense accounts. It's crazy. So instead, what you want to do is you want to use classes for that. So I'm going to switch over to a different data file. And this is probably the biggest point of uh, the day that I really want to make sure that you, it doesn't look like I've opened it yet, hold on, that I really want to make sure that you understand is that you're going to use a different list to track your programs, admin, and fundraising, and that list is called the class list, and I'm going to pull it up now. I'm going to show you how to add your classes, and, uh, and then after that, uh, we'll look at budgets real quick, and then we'll finish up. And we'll take some questions. So we'll run over a few minutes. So um, the first thing you want to do is turn on your class list. So to do that, you go to the edit. Uh, I don't know what I do there. Uh, and preferences. And then uh, I'm going to go over. Preferences are little features you turn off in the program. You click accounting. You click company and you go over to where it says use class tracking, and this is where you turn on the classes. The next thing that you do is you go to lists, class list, and this is where you have all of your programs, admin, and fundraising. So everyone listening to me will need at least three classes, one for each program, I'm sorry, one for programs, one for admin, and one for fundraising. Now, if you have more than one program, then you'll have more than three classes because everyone has admin and fundraising, and then you may have one program class or you may have multiple. To set up a class, you go to the bottom left-hand button, you click New, and then you just name it, New Program. Uh, I'm really pushing the time here, so I'm not going to worry about changing this. And yes, if you want to have subclasses, you can. You can have classes underneath it. So maybe you have a program called education. You have sums underneath it, one for each workshop that you do or something like that. So uh, Seema, we have like four minutes, and I'm getting a little thing saying, do you want to add more time? So should I click add 30 yeah, minutes? We're not going to. Yeah, let's add a little more time. So I think okay. um, if anyone has to drop off, um, we're going to be sending the recording out afterwards. Um, so if you have to drop off, uh, we can, you know, send, send everyone the recording. In the yeah. minute. I'm almost done, though. I'm almost done. It's okay, guys. Okay. So, because um, yeah. uh, I, I, want, I want you to make sure that you get this. So now what that means is when you enter transactions, you put the expense account over here, uh, rent, and then over here, you put the program that it relates to. And if it's not a program, maybe it's admin or fundraising. And yes, you can take a transaction and you can split it between different classes, all right? And you do this on every single expense that you have. You do it on the check screen, you do it on the bill screen, you do it wherever you enter expenses. You put the class down, which is your program, admin, or fundraising, and you put the account down. See, now you only have one expense account that has travel. You don't have to have five of them. And then look what you can get now. Reports, company and financial, P&L by class. You ready for this? This is going to blow your mind. So what we have here is it's kind of like departmental reporting. Any income related to a program, I'll put to that program, 
and all the expenses I put to it, the programs they relate to so I can see whether or not the program is paying for itself. And this, my friends, is how I fill out your 990 and your audit. The expenses have to be in a grid like this with the program admin fundraising at the top and the rows being the natural categories of expenses. So that is the most important point that I need to make here for you. Um, and I, uh, we've got, I'm probably going to go another eight or nine minutes here. Uh, but I do want to stop just for a second to see, Bill, if you want to ask me a couple of questions, because this is a big deal. Um, does anybody have a question, uh, either Bill or Jenny, that you want to come on the line and ask me? Jenny, do you have anything? I don't have any questions. Um, well, I've got a couple of them. Somebody is asking, is there any hope of fixing a QB file that's already set up with accounts equal to programs rather than using classes? There is. I mean, basically, if your bank accounts reconcile, what I would do is wait till the next fiscal year, inactivate all your accounts, and set up new ones that are the real accounts and use the classes appropriately going forward. Now, you won't be able to get good comparatives because it was done incorrectly in the prior year, but I wouldn't start over again. Um, now, this is actually a service that we provide, too. If some people are like, oh, my God, I don't want to do this. Um, so if you get in touch with us at QuickBooks Made Easy, that's a service that we provide as well. So in the interest of time here, I promised you something on budgeting. So I do want to at least show you where it is. To enter a budget, you go to Company, you go to Planning and Budgeting, and you go to Set Up Budgets. That's where you go to do it. And then... All of these accounts here that are uh, listed on the left-hand side, those are accounts that came from your chart of accounts list. All right. Now, I already have a budget here. If you've never entered a budget before, this will be the first screen that you see. And you pick what year you want to enter a budget for. And by the way, when you set up your QuickBooks file and you go through the Create a New Company, which was over there, it's going to ask you, what the um, fiscal year is. And I, mine is June 30, which is why this ends 2021. That's why these things bleed between calendar years. If your year end is December 31, then yours will just say 18, 19, whatever. But you pick your year, you click Next, you click Next again, and you can create a budget from previous year's actual data, but I prefer just to create one from scratch. I click Finish, and then here is all of your accounts. So if you don't see an account here that you need to enter a budget for, that means it's not in the chart of accounts list. And you'll need to go back out of this screen. You'll need to cancel out of this screen, go back into the chart of accounts list, add the account, then go back into the screen, and you'll be able to enter a budget for it. If you want to budget by month, it allows you to do that. I get 4000 this year. I get 6000 this year. I get 10000 this year. If, however, you want to budget by year, because that's kind of a pain. You've got to type over and over and over again. There is something that kind of helps you. Rent, if I click copy across, copies it all the way across. But most people don't budget by month. Most people budget by year. So if you budget by year, this is the annual total column, and you can't type in it. So what you want to do is you want to go to the first month of your accounting year, and you put the entire budget for the whole year in the very first month like that. Okay? And I've actually already done it with the 2019-2020. So you can see you put all your numbers in. Okay? And then once you've done that, and you can wait till six months into the new year to do it when you finally got the budget approved, but then you can go to reports, budgets and forecasts, budget versus actual. And what this does is it gives me, it asks which budget year I want to get the report for, and then it gives me a budget to actual, but it gives it to me by month. This was July's actual, July's budget, and the variance. And then August's actual, August budget, and the variances. 
and then said, it's a lot of columns and the board would never read this. Now, it doesn't even mean anything if you don't budget by month. We just budget by year. So I'm just going to make the columns be total only. But even if you budgeted by month, that's what you would do. And then you can very easily see this is the actuals, this is the budget for the whole year, and this is the differences. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take – I want to do uh, just one more little poll here, uh, and then I'm going to take some questions. So live on the air, so I want to make sure that I can uh, do that. But let me – actually, you know what? I think what I want to do instead, now that I think about it, is uh, let's do something else instead. Um, I want to show you where – uh, here we go. This is my little shameless plug. This is my website, QuickBooks Made Easy for Nonprofits. And if you decide that you need more help, if you go to courses and training and go to on-demand courses, we have streamable courses that you can purchase and start using immediately. Uh, the bundle, it's about 16 hours of learning. They're normally $399. We're giving them to you at a huge discount. I'll show you on the slide in a minute. Um, but uh, this is where you can pretty much learn every single thing you need to know about QuickBooks. Here's all the stuff that we talk about and more. The other thing is if you need technical support, we have technical support agreements where you can call us seven days a week. 24 hours a day, and you'll be either talking to me or one of three other tech support people that know everything there is about using QuickBooks for nonprofits. It's much better uh, than some of the other options that are out there. So uh, what I want to do now, let me get back to where my uh, – got to get back to where this is. <laughs> I'm having trouble finding where I was. Uh, let's see. Ah, here it is over here. Well, that's just the chat. I want to try and uh, just, uh, share the slides again. So I think I'm going to oh, stop yeah. the sharing. Yeah, there we go. And then I'm going to uh, go back to the slides here so that you can see. Oh, well, I don't have – shoot, I don't have that on there. Let's do the survey. Let's do this other survey. Um, and the survey that I want you to answer is a real quick survey. We have a newsletter that comes out once a uh, month. It's called Quick Tips. And all it is is a little email that has, and you've probably seen some of my stuff on, um, on uh, YouTube, but um, it's an email newsletter that sends you a tip once a month on how to make QuickBooks better for you. It's free comes out once a month, and if you sign up for the newsletter, then we can just send you that, and I promise you we're not going to blow you away with a bunch of junk email. That's really all it is. So I'd like everybody to go ahead and answer real quick, uh, and then there's one other thing I want to show you, and then we'll do some questions, and we'll end. So if you, people could go ahead and just uh, finish the poll here uh, for the little newsletter. And actually, did anybody ask a question that I can answer on the line, uh, Jenny or Bill? while um, I'm waiting for them to finish this. Hey, um, one person had asked earlier, how many total companies can you have? In like asking how many Word documents can you have? Okay. So um, uh, Isaac said, how do I start a new bank account from last year? So I'm not sure what from last year means. Uh, but to create a new bank account, you go into the chart of accounts list, you create an account, and you say bank. And then you'll need to put all the uh, balances. You need to put the opening balances in. If it's a brand new account, then you'll just enter all the transactions. Is it possible to enter budget by class? It totally is possible to enter a budget by class. Uh, yeah, so uh, starting a new balance, Isaac, uh, Probably well. There's a couple of ways of doing it. I'll share my screen and I show you. I'll show you in a second, and I'll show you Lynette where to where to budget by class. So I want to. In fact, let me go ahead and share the screen uh, so that I can start answering these other questions here. So uh, 
and this always takes a second for whatever reason. There we go. Elizabeth, I never added my credit card, about six months. Should I wait until the next fiscal year budget? No, Elizabeth, you should wait until the next credit card. Like you should pay the last bill off, but the very next list of charges, set up the card and start entering the charges that way. And I'll show you where to go to do that. So, uh, and this will help for the bank account person too. You go to the chart of accounts list, you click the bottom left-hand button, you click new. If it's a bank account, you click bank right here. You put the name of the bank. I always like to put the last four digits here. And then if there was an opening balance, find out what the opening balance was at the, la at the end of the last fiscal year. Push this button here, and you can put the balance there, and then you put the statement in date. Make sure you put the bank statement balance, not the checkbook balance. Okay? Uh, the person who wants to do the credit card, you can click New. You pick Credit Card. You click continue, you set up the card, Visa. Don't put an opening balance in, in at all. Click save and close. And then the next, when the, when the, not the bill that you're in the middle of, whatever the, basically the last bill that was paid, you don't worry about that one. But the bill that's coming due, you enter those charges. And if you look at the home page, there's a thing here that says enter credit hey, card hey, charges. Greg. Sorry, yep. I don't know if you're I don't know if you're connected um, to the screen share because we got forgot to push that other button. Okay, thanks. Okay, there you go. So to create an account, you go to lists, you go to chart of accounts list, you go to the bottom left hand button, you click new. This is where you pick bank uh, for the person who needed the bank. You click it. You put the name of the bank here. I like to put the last four digits there of the account so that I know what account it is. And for this question, I would go ahead and click Enter Opening Balance. Whatever the month that you're starting, you want to put the balance in for. I put it um, at the end of the last fiscal year. You put the ending bank balance, and you put the ending statement date. And make sure that you put the statement ending balance. In other words, if your fiscal year is December 31, you put the December 31 statement balance. You wouldn't put the checkbook balance. So that means if your balance is 20000 in the checkbook, I mean on the bank statement, but you have one check for a thousand, so your checkbook balance is nineteen. You put twenty here, and then you go into the right check window and you enter the outstanding checks as of their original date, and then the balance really will be the nineteen thousand. Okay, so um, that's basically uh, the bank account, the credit card account. You click new, you click credit card, you click continue. Uh, you put the name of the card here, and again, I like to put the, di the uh, last four digits of the card. Don't click Enter Opening Balance. What you'll do is the last bill that's already paid, don't worry about that one. But the one that's happening now, you enter those charges. And you enter those charges right down here, Enter Credit Card Charges. You click. It looks very much like a check screen. Then you can enter who. You charge the money to when it was charged, so now your date's right, the dollar amount of the charge, and here's the credit card that it goes to. And then you can point it to whatever expense account it relates to, and you can point it to whatever program it relates to. Click Save and Close. And now you'll see when I go to the chart of accounts list, here's my credit card with a balance of $1,000. Okay? Uh, let's see. Um, Gail, do I use class list only for expenses? No, I would use classes, as you saw, I use classes not just for expenses, but I use them for income as well. Now, a accountant really only needs to break out your expenses by class, but by me putting any revenues that relate to a program to that program's class, I can see whether or not I'm making or losing money on this program. This program's losing 14000 This program's making $5,700. Uh, any unrestricted revenues I put to the fundraising class. Okay? So uh, let's see. What I'm going to do now is, because I think it's important that you have these codes so that you can get the discounts, and so I need to show you these codes. So let me get to where that is. Um, here it is, right? I think that's the code. 
Um, yeah, I think this is the code. I hope I got the right one. Hold on. Yeah, no, this is it. All right, let me share this with you. Uh, there it is. All right, so if you decide you need more help, which I'm sure a lot of you will, um, you can get uh, – the, first of all, we have a three-day webinar series that's happening um, from May 12th to May 14th for the desktop. And for those three days, it's two hours a day for three days, um, we're going to give you $50 off. Now, this sale is only good until today's Tuesday, so it's good for two days. Um, so it's, it's usually $199. You can get it for $149. If you want to start getting your questions answered immediately, just one-on-one, -on -one, we're going to give you one year of unlimited tech support. It's usually a hundred and it's usually four ninety-nine for a year. We're going to give it to you for one hundred and ninety-nine dollars, and then you'll be able to get tech support. And the codes there, you can see where they are. Um, Bailey uh, uh, um, Seema will put them out for you to see. Um, but it's TSTS three hundred for that one and then TSW50 off for that one. Now, one of our streaming products online, it's the basic one, QuickBooks Made Easy for Nonprofits, The Essentials. It's about six or seven hours of learning. You can get for $109 directly through TechSoup. So if you go to TechSoup, you'll be able to get that product there. So I think I'm going to go ahead and turn this back over to you. Uh, Seema, and I apologize for thinking this was 90 minutes. That's what I planned no, for. I think, so. uh, no, I apologize. I think we there was a, a miscommunication, but it looks like we're uh, in pretty good shape. It, you covered a lot of content. So um, the live screen share. Yep. And, okay. All right. So uh, thank you, Greg, for today's presentation, and thank you to our audience for uh, staying with us, uh, and apologies for the confusion about timing. Um, we have a post-event survey, so if you guys have feedback for us, any feedback that you have is really helpful. Um, if you're on social media, feel free to give us a follow on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. We also have our blog, which is blog.techsoup.org. Um, Greg is going to be doing uh, – a couple more webinars. Uh, I don't know why this slide isn't showing. Uh, sorry about that. Yep. Okay. So um, Greg's doing another webinar on March 5th, and then um, he has a couple more happening in April. And if you guys are interested in joining any of our upcoming webinars, you can go to techsoup.org slash community dash events. Um, we also offer courses. So if you're interested in doing a deeper dive into topics such as Google Analytics or Facebook advertising and several others. We have, um, we have a lot of those available on TechSoup courses, and you can get 10% off uh, with the, this coupon code, which we'll be sending out in the email afterwards. We also offer TechSoup services, so if you guys need managed IT or help desk, um, that is also available. And again, we'll be sending the URL in the follow-up email. Um, so I just want to say thank you again to Greg and to Bill and to Jennifer and to Stephen um, and to Lara for all uh, helping today, and we hope to see you on our next webinar. Thank you so much.